Past research has shown that how people rate their physical attractiveness is only moderately correlated with how they are rated by others, suggesting that at least some people have little insight to their true level of attractiveness. But a paper published in 2020 by Professor Tobias Greitmeier of the University of Innsbruck in Austria suggests that this is largely due to self-perceived bias or perhaps even self-delusion by the most unattractive among us. In fact, the most unattractive groups, as we can see in this figure, considered themselves on average to be just below a 6 on an attractive scale of 1 to 9, so well above the average by this scale, while in reality they were actually rated as just above a 3, just above the bottom third of the rest of the population. As you can see, this gap in perception narrows until above average participants finally give an accurate rating of their own attractiveness, with the most attractive people actually rating themselves as being lower than reality. Could this be driven by a sense of unfairness or mistreatment by others? Well, perhaps, but in reality, no. The study also found that the participants' belief in how others perceived their attractiveness was also lower than their actual attractiveness, suggesting either ignorance of what is perceived to be attractive at best, and at worst, genuinely being self-deluded. If you got nothing from everything I just said there, what we're finding is that the least attractive people, physically speaking, think that they're more attractive than they are, and the most attractive people, so the other end of the spectrum, think that they're less attractive than they are as rated by other people. This is because this study, if it sounds very familiar to you, is very reminiscent of what we know as the Dunning-Kruger effect, which I'm sure many of you might have heard before, the idea being that there exists an innate cognitive bias whereby people with the low ability at doing some kind of task overestimate their ability, with high performers on the other end of the spectrum tending to underestimate their skills. It's like I've just started playing football and I've started scoring my first goals and now I think I'm the best player on the pitch, but those who have been playing for longer realize that there's more to the game than what you can just see. Like positioning, tactics, pace and tempo, so many things that a coach could probably tell you. The Dunning-Kruger effect can be seen on both ends of the spectrum for any type of skill or really any type of attractiveness group, but it seems to be more pronounced in relative terms on the bottom quartile or the 25% of performers of some kind of particular task or attractiveness and they tend to see themselves as being part of the top two quartiles so they think that they're much better than they really are when in reality their skills don't reflect that. It's usually explained in terms of metacognitive abilities in cognitive psychology and this approach is based on the idea that poor performers have not yet acquired the ability to distinguish between good and bad performances and they tend to overrate themselves because they don't see the difference between their performances and the performances of a very skilled veteran at say a task, a sport, even in attractiveness. This might just be due to the fact that they're not exposed to genuine ability and skill through their workplace or friendship groups and so they don't know what they don't know. That's the key that we're trying to take away here. However, can we say the same for attractiveness? Even before Instagram models, adverts and well, coups, obviously, people are constantly being exposed to objective beauty standards through fashion magazine and films. So why do we have this phenomenon for attractiveness? How do we know what makes an attractive face even before any of this ever existed? To answer if the Dunning-Kruger effect applies to physical attractiveness, so does this mean that the most unattractive people don't know what makes them unattractive? And it could probably explain all the bad uh, uh, glow up and looks maxing and what the other type of attractiveness advice that you see on the internet where people tell you to just shave your hair and things are going to be all right. No, no, if you shave your hair, things are not going to be all right for the majority of men. That's a bad advice. <laughs> so, this is what Professor Greitmeier sought to find out by employing six studies to find where this Greitmeier effect, so we're coining this new term, actually starts to exist. In study 3, for example, they examined whether the motive to perceive oneself in a favorable light accounts for the tendency that unattractive people overestimate their attractiveness. People typically exhibit a strong tendency to discredit negative information about themselves, and this is quite well known, we've covered this in the past, and studies have shown that affirming the self-concept may satisfy the motivation to protect one's self-worth and thus counteract the biased processing of negative information about oneself. What this means is when you hear bad things about yourself, you just ignore it. Hence, study 3 has shown us whether unattractive people would be less likely to overestimate their attractiveness after an affirmation of self-worth 
after inevitably saying yes to questions like, have you ever been generous and selfless to another person? Well, obviously they're going to say yes to that. What they're doing, if you're not following me here, is that they're doing the one-two punch of giving them self-positive affirmations, bringing their self-esteem up, and then giving them the bad news that this is how other people in the group have rated you as a three out of nine. Also, to address the possibility that people use those attractiveness criteria that best serve their wish to be attractive, such as having a nice body to compensate for an unattractive face, separate measures of the participant's attractiveness of the face, body, and overall appearance were also employed. However, as you can see, nothing actually changes. Participants were not employing confirmation bias based on a single aspect of their body, and nor were they seeking affirmation. What this means is that if you know you're not the best looking, then you're going to change the goalpost for what physical beauty is by saying physical beauty isn't about the face, it's actually about the body, or vice versa, or it's just about personality. And when you look at the comment section in some of my videos, oh no, beauty comes from within, don't listen to him, he doesn't know what he's talking about, you're just telling on yourself here. Attractive people on the other end of the spectrum, from the Great Meyer Effect, understand the importance of physical beauty, because most of them understand the benefits that they get from it and how it influences their lives, rather than trying to deny it or move the goalpost. Study 4 tried to correct for exposure to different attractiveness levels, so participants were exposed to attractive or unattractive people before rating themselves. It was hypothesized that unattractive participants would lower their self-rated attractiveness and thereby reducing their tendency to overestimate their own attractiveness compared to the objective ratings by other people, if they're exposed to people more attractive than them. In contrast, attractive participants should be less affected because there is little discrepancy in attractiveness between themselves and the attractive stimulus people, so they look just like the more attractive group because they are the attractive group. As you can see, however, this also had little effect on either group. However, interestingly, study 6 did something similar, although this time they allowed participants to select different comparison targets to see if unattractive, more than attractive people select unattractive others to compare their attractiveness to. Basically, what Greitmeier is saying is, do attractive people choose harder targets to compare themselves to or easier low-hanging fruit? by comparing themselves to more unattractive people with unfortunate circumstances, and do we do this to make ourselves feel better about our physical looks? If this isn't the case, it would mean that unattractive people are choosing other unattractive people to compare themselves to, and therefore by comparison, by not being exposed to more attractive faces, they think that they're more attractive than they really are, until they get humbled. I genuinely think that's what's going on with social media nowadays because in the past, you wouldn't have been exposed to so many top 1% physical attractiveness people, yet that seems to be all you're seeing nowadays because they're the ones who make the algorithm pop, and so on TikTok especially, it's overstimulating and it leads to people being more dissatisfied with their own physical looks because if you remember, the reason why we reject negative information about ourselves is a very self-protective measure, it's to protect our own egos. So, as we can see from the results, unattractive people rather predictably at this point chose other unattractive people to compare themselves to. Most people don't like to compare themselves with those that are better than them, and this can go for money, status, even your physical looks. It's something that can still be changed with effort, and a lot of people don't want to put in that effort, so they try to avoid the topic altogether by comparing themselves only to less attractive people. Very significantly, the researchers also found that unattractive participants rated other unattractive people as higher than attractive people do, with ratings of attractive people being more uniform. So it appears that participants are not bringing others down for the sake of doing so, or to make themselves look better, but genuinely have different standards that are lower down on the attractiveness scale by everyone else. And this in turn is due to your own physical attractiveness. If you think about it, if you've only ever known a below middle class lifestyle, then it's hard to imagine how the upper middle class or the one percenters maybe might be living. In other words, when it comes to looks, we slightly modify what we think are objective standards to suit our appearances and not the other way around. Another interesting note to add to this is that although, as we mentioned, unattractive people were more likely to choose other unattractive people to compare themselves to, the results on this graph do confirm that how you compare yourselves to other people has an effect on your own ratings of attractiveness. Because most people don't understand objective measures of attractiveness, biological indicators of good genetic health, the only way that the average person can assess their own beauty is by comparing themselves to other people. 
You'll notice on this graph there is a remaining gap. So what can we say about that? Why do we have this discrepancy? Study 6 is very revealing. Although participants' choice of who to compare themselves to did not have an impact on how unattractive participants rated their own attractiveness, the fact that the unattractive participants selected unattractive stimulus people to compare themselves to suggests that they may have an inkling, albeit maybe even a subconscious one, that they are less attractive than where they want to be or they consciously claim themselves to be. Given that people tend to compare themselves with those who they feel are similar, as shown by Wood 1989, it appears that the unattractive participants realize that they had something more in common with their unattractive rather than with the attractive stimulus group. Even though the self-ratings of the unattractive participants suggest otherwise, they seem to realize that they are less attractive than others. Because if you didn't know this in the back of your mind, you, the results would show that the unattractive group would just be comparing themselves to everyone. But they're not. They're not comparing themselves to the least attractive people so they feel better about themselves. They know subconsciously, somewhere in the back of their mind, that they're not where they want to be. It could just be that this is a study, and thus you don't want to really reveal your insecurities of your physical attractiveness to a group of anonymous researchers, and maybe you'd rather reveal it to someone that you can confide in, like a close friend. But even with this particular study flaw, the results are still very striking and revealing. The prospect that they might be more honest about their attractiveness to a friend rather than to an anonymous group of researchers suggests that they do acknowledge the importance of attractiveness regardless. Let's close this discussion out so you guys can have a take home message. There is generally a high agreement about who is attractive and who is not, but beauty is still to a small extent in the eye of the beholder, we've always said this like who's. There is relatively high agreement about the attractiveness of very attractive, attractive, about average, average, unattractive individuals, but there is still disagreement about who is very unattractive, as shown by Kanazawa and at 2018, meaning that very unattractive individuals are still attractive to some. There are clearly some paradoxical advantages to being very unattractive if that's the case. For example, very unattractive women, not men, are more likely to be married than others, and there is some truth to the claim that scientists are more likely to be taken more seriously if they are very unattractive, but I guess that's for another video, and this applies to a lot of professions as we found out during research for this video. At Cooves, we believe in self-awareness, understanding where you sit on terms of your own physical attractiveness, because if you want to improve, you need to know where to start from. That's exactly what the Cooves Aesthetic Report is, so if you want to get your face assessed by a team of doctors and dentists, get a professional assessment, understand how you can improve at where you are currently from a very objective measure of rating, not by comparing yourself to others, but by exactly your features, then head over to the Coos website and order a report. As always, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. And the Coos subreddit is where you can ask a lot of questions. We read those first.